This is a very exciting video because we are going to be working on inside turns. Inside turns are what really clarify leash manners and heel position walking. They make it really real to the dog that they have to stay in that position. Most dogs will continue trying to move forward past the healing boundary line so they keep catching the end of the leash. You don't want to just walk in that way where they're hitting the end of the leash all the time. You need to do that to introduce the concept to them, but then you want to cut it out pretty quickly and just use it as a reminder. The dog may walk nicely in a loose leash where they don't generally put pressure on the leash and they yield to the feeling of a taut leash pretty easily. However, heel position walking helps open up a lot more that you can do with this dog. For walking in a group or working on behavioral issues and your leadership dynamic, mastering inside turns is a must. The inside turn is the method to getting nice heel position walking without holding the leash taut or popping the leash all the time. Inside turns have this name because when you do the turn, you're cutting off the dog's path and they're on the inside of the pivot. Inside turns work a lot easier if the dog already has a concept of the heel position. Otherwise, the dog will just think you're walking into them for no reason, and it adds unnecessary stress and confusion to the learning process. With this technique, the dog may be a little more subdued on the walk. They may be being careful, thinking hard to stay in heel position. That's all good. The main goal is they will be watching you more closely, paying more attention to where you are because they don't want to get walked into. To do inside turns, first mentally note your heel boundary line and hold your leash short but slack. Walk along with the dog behind that line. When they start to approach the line, you cross their path. You are basically walking around the dog and the dog has to be behind the heel boundary for that to work. If the dog is too far ahead, you will be walking into their body rather than cutting them off. Use your leg that is on the opposite side of the dog as a visual and physical barrier for the heel position. You'll lead with that leg or swing that leg when you pivot. If crossing the dog's path isn't clear to the dog, if they don't yield to you crossing their path, then you can add in the leash to clarify what you want them to do. You can add in leash pressure, pulses, or pops right before the dog would make or makes contact with your leg in the pivot. This way, you don't trip over them so much and they figure out that they want to avoid walking into your leg. When you pivot, you want to go around the dog. The dog is on the inside, but you want to stay in a relative line. Don't go in a big loop-de-loop -loop around the dog. That's a bad habit people often fall into because they are worried about walking into the dog, they don't want to use the leash, or are just still figuring out the body mechanics. Inside turns work because they are compelling. The dog wants to avoid them. They are convincing enough to the dog to be a thing to be avoided that the dog is going to change its behavior. So the inside turns really up the ante for the dog and really clearly clarifies the heel position boundary. How these turns work is first, the knee or leg is a visual correction. Not all corrections have to be physical. A lot of times dogs will just see something coming towards them and they'll want to avoid it. And it's not because they've been beaten, they just naturally want to avoid it. They just don't want that thing coming right at their face. Some dogs don't care about the visual part at all, so the knee or leg then becomes a physical barrier. When you cross their path, if they keep going forward, they will actually make contact between your leg and their face. It's like if you're taking a boxing class and the person you're partnered with is not even aiming at your face. You're not going to learn to avoid the punch. You're going to get bad technique and you're not learning actually how to box. If the person is aiming at your actual face, then you're actually going to learn how to box because you're going to learn how to avoid the actual contact. It's the same thing with the knee. You have to block their path like you mean it in a way that they're going to learn to actually avoid it.
If the dog is totally unfazed about getting walked into in the face, they don't care about the visual part of the correction, they are probably either confused and still figuring it out, or they're just not very physically sensitive, or they're distracted, or any combination of those factors. Either way, you can add in use of the leash to clarify the technique. So right before you would make contact with your leg, you use leash pressure, pulses, or pops to help the dog pay attention to the leg. It helps the dog be more successful, so you can then praise them or reward them for doing the turn correctly. Depending on what you think is going on with the dog at that time, like if they're being confused versus being stubborn, will determine which way you use the leash. If a dog is more sensitive but confused, then use leash pressure or pulses. If the dog is more of a confident brute, tend more towards a pop just before they make contact with your leg. And then when they do a good turn, you want to praise them a lot and reward them a lot. Don't take it for granted when they're figuring out what you want. Tell them when they're doing a good job. When you're doing turns, inside or outside turns, you're changing your direction and you're not going straight to a destination. When we are trying to get to a specific place in a specific yeah. amount of time, it's really easy to ignore the need for interventions and ignore the need to slow down and do some turns. Then we miss the opportunity Good. to clarify our expectations and the dog doesn't have as nice of Let's leash go. manners. For your services, focus more on the time you have the dog out and what they're learning rather than a need to go a certain distance. If you are working with a new dog who needs a lot of foundation, you may be doing a lot of turns and you might end up just going around the block. This is going to be more beneficial to the dog's mental health and your job in the long run. You're stimulating the dog's brain, which is going to tire them out. So set up all your services based on time to give you the freedom to lay this foundation and build your relationship. The skills and interventions you use will depend on what the dog needs in that moment and what their skill level is. The skills of yielding to leash pressure, outside turns, introducing heel position walking, and inside turns are a progression and they build on each other. Ultimately, the goal is to walk along in a straight line on a nice slack leash in heel position. And to get there, you need to tune into the dog's skill level and build on it. For a dog that's just beginning starting on walking nicely, they may be so used to ignoring the person on the other end of the leash that just doing outside turns and rewarding them for acknowledging your existence is a win. Some dogs are so desensitized to the feeling of leash pressure that getting them to move an inch to yield to pressure on the leash is a win. For a dog who's been working with a trainer or whose parents have done a lot of work on leash walking, you're probably just using these techniques to show the dog that you're on the same level as those other leaders in their life. Just use the techniques as much as you need to use them. If the dog is on a slack leash, then you don't have to do any interventions and that's really just a really nice walk. That's the ideal situation. And to get to that point, use these interventions as needed. Inside turns can really trip people up at first. You're figuring out how to coordinate the leash length, your knee, your body, also while anticipating what the dog is doing and trying to meet their skill level. There's a lot that goes into that. The more you practice it, the more comfortable you'll get and the more you'll be able to do it with more dogs. And once you master it, it's going to boost your whole walking game. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Also, check out our Patreon where you can sign up for even more course materials and plug in to a supportive community of skilled professional dog walkers and canine cred fans.